INFJ wiring of the mind. Hey, it's Joel Mark Witt for Personality Hacker. As an INFJ, your mind is fundamentally wired differently from other personalities. You've probably already heard that you're an introvert, intuitive, feeler, judger. And a lot of articles and resources focus on the behaviors you show the world as an INFJ. Now, behavior can be helpful, but it isn't the complete picture when figuring out your personality. I want to give you a peek inside your mind to expose the mental wiring that makes you an INFJ. So let's get started. Your four-letter code, INFJ, gives us insight into how your mind is learning information and making decisions. The primary way your mind sees the world is by using a mental process we've nicknamed perspectives. Its technical name is introverted intuition. When looking at the world, Perspectives is interested in finding deep insight. It tends to ask a lot of discovery questions like, what is the meaning of knowledge? What are the long range implications of emerging social trends? How are two people in an argument actually agreeing with each other without realizing it? Imagine a four passenger car. If one of your mental processes could drive, it would be perspectives. Using this mental process puts you in flow. You've been using it your whole life. It's your reality filter and it informs what captures your attention. So if perspectives is how you see the world as an INFJ, then the mental process we've nicknamed harmony is how you make your best decisions. Harmony is a feeling process and ask the question, what gets everyone's needs met? Think about that four passenger car again. If perspectives is in the driver's seat, then harmony is in the front passenger seat. It's your co-pilot mental process and what we call your growth state. Of course, this is a four passenger car, so you also have two mental processes in the back seat. Sitting right behind the co-pilot is a mental process we call accuracy. Accuracy asks the question, does this make sense? It's a thinking process concerned with data, truth, and congruity of thought. When not used in a healthy way, accuracy can cause an INFJ to withdraw and become hypercritical of themselves and other people. This mental process has the development of about a 10 year old child. Finally, behind the driver of perspectives sits a mental process we've nicknamed sensation. We call this your blind spot or three-year-old mental process. Sensation's all about real-time kinetics and understanding the world through your physical senses by being fully immersed in the here and now. Notice we haven't talked about INFJ behaviors. Instead, I've been talking about the mental wiring of your mind. Behaviors can give us clues to how your mind is wired. But it's far more interesting to dive into what causes our behaviors as people. Here at Personality Hacker, we don't talk about personality types for their own sake. We think understanding your personality is one of the best ways to frame your personal growth journey. And we attract INFJs who are interested in personal growth. Next up, I want to talk about the best way to grow yourself as an INFJ. Remember the car model we used to show the mental wiring of your personality? As an INFJ, your co-pilot is the mental process called harmony. Its technical name is extroverted feeling. This is what we call your growth position. It's the highest leverage point for growth in your personality. Harmony allows you as an INFJ to make decisions that help you answer the question, what gets everyone's needs met? Here are some ways that INFJs can phrase questions using their harmony process. Am I truly giving back or just seeking approval? What's the kind thing I can do, not just the nice thing? How can I be available to meet people's needs without compromising my own? Does it make sense for me to put aside all my desires for this relationship? Harmony encourages you as an INFJ to proactively set boundaries for yourself and others, leading to an ultimately happier atmosphere. It's easy for an INFJ to get lost in seeking the approval of others. But if those relationships are never built on intimacy and understanding, you will always feel like something is missing. Growing your harmony process can be a challenge for you as an INFJ. It can feel threatening to your heart to become vulnerable and speak up in the outside world. Every personality type tends to avoid growing their co-pilot mental process. But here lies the power of understanding your personality. Don't see your harmony as something to delay or avoid. Embrace getting into this mental process because it gives you the opportunity to create boundaries and become an empowered INFJ. Harmony also encourages an INFJ to get out of the perfectionism cycle, replacing it with the concept, I too grant approval to others. No one is the final arbiter of approval for you. 
As an INFJ, you can also give and withhold your approval. Setting boundaries in the outside world gets your needs met. It feels right to focus on the part you play in the approval-disapproval social game. If you want to quickly connect with others and remain empowered, you'll need to get out of your comfort zone and set boundaries in the real world. As an INFJ, your mind is already wired to create win-wins. Don't ignore this natural talent that you possess. Start asking, what boundaries can I create in the real world? Spend some focused time feeling through the pain points that you know need boundaries in your life. Say no to every request for one full day. It doesn't matter how easy the request is. Just say no to practice setting boundaries. Ask, what me time will I create for myself today? Pay attention to crazy makers, those people who step on your boundaries. Practice standing up for yourself when they come into your world and demand your attention. Do what it takes to set your personal boundaries. As an INFJ, you will bring the best version of yourself to the world when you open your heart to others, fully empowered, with strong personal boundaries in place. We'd love for you to keep us up to date about your journey. One of the best places to do that is at our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash personality hacker. And of course, come over to personalityhacker.com, leave a comment, ask a question, or take our personality test. Next, I want to talk about the defense strategies your mind uses that steal happiness from you. And of course, what to do about it. The word defensive. You probably think of an emotional state or someone getting offended in the moment. She's acting so defensive, someone might say. But I'm not talking about emotions. I'm using the word positionally. As an INFJ, you have a specific area of your mind that you defend. As an INFJ, that's your accuracy process, sitting in the back seat of your car. It has the sophistication of a 10-year-old child. And that's okay when you use this process to create intimacy or playfulness. The trouble starts when you begin to allow this 10-year-old process to seduce you into a self-protective space. As an INFJ, accuracy, its technical name is introverted thinking, generally shows up as withdrawal and a critical spirit. Accuracy is in a large part about cold facts and consulting your inner logical truth on a matter. When done well, accuracy is about rooting out biases and inconsistencies of logic. But when you're using accuracy defensively, it won't be about fault finding in a person's logic. It will be about finding fault with the person themselves. You may keep people at arm's length, often through criticism. You're much more at peace and happy when you're focused on positive, connective relationships. If your 10-year-old gets in the mix, it will encourage you to withdraw from creating intimate and satisfying bonds. In an effort to protect yourself from being vulnerable, you deny yourself the opportunity to be truly connected and understood. At worst, INFJs can even become physical shut-ins, so afraid of being vulnerable that they rarely leave the house and instead choose to wallow in their own self-loathing about being perpetually misunderstood. Focus more on creating healthy boundaries around people's energy rather than strategies to synthesize invulnerability. Don't let your accuracy process steal your happiness. The solution is to focus on growing your harmony process like we've talked about before. As an INFJ, you're much more connected and happy when you're focused on meeting the needs of those around you and yourself. If your 10-year-old of accuracy gets into the mix, it will encourage a critical spirit and an unwillingness to open your heart to others. Now, I want to hear from you. How are you letting your 10-year-old of accuracy hijack your happiness? And what are the ways you as an INFJ are playing it safe? You can leave a comment or take our personality test over at personalityhacker.com. And next up, we'll talk about how you best show and receive love as an INFJ. I've got two quick lists for you today. First, how INFJs ask, do you love me? Second, how INFJs show other people love. Here are a few examples of how INFJs ask, do you love me? Just imagine an INFJ asking these questions. Do you feel connected to me? Will you check in and make sure I'm okay? Will you acknowledge and take care of my needs? Am I safe with you? Do you accept and approve of me? Here are some examples of INFJs saying, yes, I love you. Just imagine an INFJ making these statements. I will meet your needs before I meet my own. I will check in regularly to make sure you're okay. I will do my best to keep my morale up. 
I will show you appreciation in whatever way I'd like to be shown appreciation. As an INFJ, you're probably nodding in agreement. Just remember that other personalities can sometimes see these ways you show love as smothering or intrusive. Feel free to share with people in your life how your mind works. Let them know the ways you show love are truly connective for you. If you want to go deeper in your personal development, we have a ton of resources, articles, and recordings about personal development through the lens of understanding your personality. Come over to personalityhacker.com. Next up, let's talk about where to go next in your personal growth as an INFJ. I have some action steps for you. We've been talking about you, the INFJ personality type. I've already detailed the mental wiring of your mind. We've talked about your highest leverage point for growth and shed some light on your defensive strategies. And we've outlined how you give and receive love. So what's next for you as an INFJ? How will you launch yourself on a personal development journey that works for you? Understanding that each of us have a unique personal growth path seems obvious. And yet self-help authors and teachers often teach a one-size-fits-all model of growth. At Personality Hacker, it works well to personalize your development as an INFJ. So that's how we've designed all of our frameworks and models. You now know the mental process to grow yourself as an INFJ is harmony. Most INFJs want to create win-wins in the outside world. They want to connect people and provide a happy environment. As an INFJ, there is nothing as rewarding as seeing your loved ones enjoying life and living it to the fullest. The enemy of harmony is cold, distant criticism. Harmony requires the strength to wade through a world of people in pain, looking for someone to act as an emotional dialysis machine. You, as an INFJ, have to set up healthy boundaries in order for you to get your needs met. It's the only way for you to show up at your best and not in an ungenerous, unnourished state. Set up your conditions to access this mental process of harmony as much as possible. When you come across someone with an unmet need, put yourself in their shoes to determine what that need may be. If you cannot identify it, ask them what it could be in a loving way. Some people may not know themselves, so offer to talk about it until the need is identified. Give plenty of genuine affirmation, but avoid praise if you don't mean it. Offer honest support and be okay if the timing just isn't right for them yet. Work on building each of these skills, especially the ones that are most challenging for you. It's common for INFJs to feel almost spiritually satisfied once they conquer their fear of vulnerability and experience connection with solid personal boundaries in place. Most of your growth as an INFJ happens by thoughtfully opening your heart to others. If you really want to deep dive into your individual growth plan as an INFJ, I invite you to check out our INFJ personal development starter kit. You can find more information at personalityhacker.com. And let me know what personal growth actions you're taking in your life and what has already resonated with you. I'm Joel Mark Witt for Personality Hacker. I'll talk with you real soon.